You're listening to Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian. And I am Joey. And I'm Jess. This is episode 145 of Mid-Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. Come on along, everybody. Spend the next hour or so with us talking about gravel bikes, adventure biking, bike packing, bike camping, some pretty cool YouTube gravel bike videos, or just playing bikes. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you, Joey? I'm doing pretty horrible. Why is that? <laughs> Don't say oh that. God. Just kidding. I got new candles to you, uh, you know. I told you earlier, I am, I am on a hunt now because I know that you love yeah. the candles. I am I am going to find you some some just unique sort of like bespoke candles. We um eat breakfast every morning by the candle that you see here in the middle of my, our my table. new candle flavors are like Christmas like uh, tree lot. We got them from TJ Maxx. Smell like a nice tree lot. Smells like a Hallmark movie. I bet. No, it doesn't. No, <laughs> not my book. So you watch a Christmas Hallmark movie and just light a nice Christmas candle at the same. No, but time. you were watching Hallmark last oh, week. Oh, I watch Hallmark all the time. I, I use it as an ample opportunity to... It smells like uh, pine when I light it. I, I, I don't mind that. Without the sappy fingers. I don't mind the whole Hallmark There might be sappy thing. fingers if I have a breacher. <laughs> okay, good grief. It, it always goes that way. You know, like with a goo packet. You get hey, sappy fingers. What um, you... Speaking of goo packet. Yeah? There was a goo packet in my laundry machine. No, no. I'm glad it's your laundry machine. Well, I don't care whose laundry machine it is. It's like the dating game podcast. <laughs> What? No, wait a minute. Was the goo packet open or was it? It was not open and it went through the whole cycle and I reached my hand in there to take it out and here's a goo package just hanging. No, was it still it. intact? It's still intact. Then nothing well, wrong. Be careful. That could be my chamois butter too. <laughs> wait till Joey's about to eat it and it's like soapy on the outside a little bit. I don't think that makes You're the only one, Joey, with I think something um I have an old fashioned, but I also got a couple beers yesterday. I got like the uh, the bottle like the one big bottle of beer. Mm-hmm. I got a few of those of Nick's. Oh, the big the mega size. Yeah, some yeah. it's not like mega size, it's a little Is bit. it from Victory Brewing? No. But okay. I got Victory I got those for you, Brian. And it's a I got a stout. Oh, okay. Then if you wanted a beer, you're not a you don't drink out all anymore. I you Unless know Bud Light Platinum or so, Mike's. No, I'm I'm trying to stay away from the beer because you know, stout and porter season is really bad for you. We're body positive here. I get it, but I'm just trying to, you know, be respectful of my body and and maybe not fill it up with a loaf of bread. <laughs> maybe not drink a loaf of bread. But you know. I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to stay away from I bought from a new bottle of Makers now. yesterday, too. Now that, I can, you know, like you say, whiskey. Whiskey greater than beer. Uh, Jess got a polar seltzer. I got my sweet iced tea. Um, actually, unsweet sweetened iced tea. So You don't want your teeth to rot out. Okay, you guys have nothing in the... <laughs> <laughs> you guys have nothing in the show notes about... I'm shooting from the hip. So, I'm going to start this week, then. I'm just amazed that we're able to ride outdoors in, in November the way we are right now. I mean, this weather is amazing. It's beautiful outside. I, today, I layered up yesterday. You know, I had on knee warmers yesterday, and I've been doing the whole long sleeve jersey with the vest, and that just seems to be perfect. That's what I did yesterday, just bibs, no knee warmers. So you and I were pretty much dressed the same? <laughs> How is that? I think my tolerance for the cold is increasing. Um. Oh, the other side of Route Four, all mm-hmm. the back roads in the shade. Mm-hmm. It was it was chillier. Yep, yep. Um, I was actually comfortable. I was pretty just like middle of the road. I wasn't hot. and I wasn't cold. Yeah. How's that? We rode the same roads yesterday, but at different times. Yeah, I was bringing up your rear. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think I was I was behind you. Yep. Yeah, true. Because when I was coming off the so island, when you were coming I stalked out of the you. You were at McDonald's, and I turned off a dial. I'm like, uh, I'm just gonna, and then maybe yeah. No, I don't think I was quite there yet because when I stopped in Solomon's... Oh, no, I watch your... Uh, you were up in Lesby. I think huh. I may have been coming down onto the island instead of coming off the island, but pretty much the same, I guess. I don't really know. I don't know. Um, well, I'm just, I'm just... I got to find my Brian turned on. I am excited. I think we got a whole rest of this week is going to be beautiful. So yeah. I know it's global warming, but you know, enjoy it. If it's going to happen, just, <laughs> just enjoy it. Just relax it. Get on your it. bike. Get outside. Like and also yesterday, I rolled over eight thousand miles for the year. Very so, nice. Wow. I don't. I don't know if I'm going to make it to ten or not. Um, 
I think I'd have to work pretty hard and I'm not really sure I'm interested in working pretty hard <laughs> to get that. I don't know that it's that important to me. Um, I'm just trying to do 200 more miles <laughs> to roll 3000. <laughs> like that's just, pretty hard. You know, I, I'm sure by the time trainer season rolls around, although normally we'd be full on a trainer right now. So I, you know, and I fell in love a little bit at Philly bike expo with me or Mark. Nope. With Otso. Oh yeah. <laughs> I did fall a little bit in love at the Philly bike expo with an Otso Warrican titanium. So then you'd be the Otso oh, Otso man. We're talking about a bike. That's yeah. the biggest thing now. See now when I get a new bike chest though, it's huge news Okay, because I don't buy them like every so other week. I, I don't mean to throw Joey out there and I'm so sorry. I, oh, you already I, did I, it once I'm going to preface this with I love Joey and I will never divorce Joey but I walked into the bike shop and I saw that there was a Sequoia on the top of his car <laughs> saw that and too. I came into the bike shop very quietly and I said I love you I will never divorce you but is that a new bike on top of your car and the people around him started cracking up <laughs> like everybody at the bike shop was cracking up and then he's like no it's Nadine's and I was like okay can I have your credit card I mean but it was like a very like I mean it's a very oh, where like, is my debit card so I I came in and said the same thing didn't I yeah it's like what's that Sequoia okay. doing on the top of your car <laughs> what's the big deal if there's Sequoia? what if I bought a Sequoia no big deal I mean you might buy a green a wall well this Who morning knows? we were talking about that Joey has his blue bike and his purple bike, and now he's got to find one that puts on the trainer, blah, 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 blah. A green so that's bike. why green I new. was assuming that it was the new bike on top of the car. And how would you get all the crazy vinyl off of that, though? What? Nothing. <laughs> the green bike. That's painted. Oh, so it's not coming off? No. Okay. The A wall, not the square. Yeah. Yeah. I'm selling Nadine Sequoia. So someone's looking for a great deal on a well-maintained 54 Sequoia. It is a nice looking bike. With too. 105 on it and some nice stands wheels. Yeah, that's a nice looking bike. If it was a little bit bigger, it, it would have been mine. I told her that. Think so, really? Yeah. I would have bought it. See, Jess, she's over there. Her eyes are rolling around in her head. My eyes are she wants a, She got a Peloton. I, I got so much leeway right now. Yeah, yeah but, right. but now I'm asking for the Peloton treadmill, so uh, I do have to be cautious and kind. It was so hard for her not to tell the Wahoo guy she's riding a Wahoo bike. Like, <laughs> oh, my, in, my... She's like, my um indoor... Yeah, my indoor bike thing is a little bit higher than this. And, oh. It's not as aggressive. Like, when you're on that... Um, bike, you know, you're down there. You're like in drop handlebars, you know. And my bike is kind of a little bit more upright. Well, but I did feel weird taking the Wahoo towel on my Peloton. But we're all okay. oh, don't worry about that. I, I, Joe, you've been after me for a long time to look into titanium. A while. I've there's probably podcasts where you could listen, and I've mentioned yeah, it. Yeah. And I wanted you to get a Cosmic Stallion or yeah. like the Taiwan and other bikes. And yep. Well, there was a beam of light on Saturday that just was like. Well, you have to admit you know that, that was, like the sound effect. Oh, it's a beautiful bike. Oh my god, it was. It's a beautiful, drop dead gorgeous. I we will get into that a little bit deeper, but um, it is just an absolutely gorgeous, it's a looker. gorgeous bike, and uh, be helping out working with uh, Nate up at uh, Hush Money. So, yeah, excited about that too. So, a little reference for them. I too. do love Nate. So yeah, so I'll be buying my bike from far away. Yeah. Now those those are uh, so folks that don't know you Otso, do all your service up there too. Otso is, <laughs> Otso is a sister company to Wolf Tooth, and they are the bike. I'm sure is made over in Taiwan, but it is it is a Wisconsin company. Otso they are the en- the engineers from Wolf Tooth decide to start a bike company. Yeah, and they do a very nice job at that. That's uh, awesome. Otso Otso man. Well, yeah, Tooth. basically. Yeah. I want to be an Otso. Uh, now we're gonna pay royalties on that. Ugh. There goes everything that we've we've earned, ever. All right, so what's going on with you guys? Well, I almost got a divorce today. <laughs> no, I kidding. almost witnessed Joey getting a divorce today. <laughs> I got yelled at for my house plans before dinner, um, but everything is going good. Well, they have grown considerably. I mean, I know there I was, didn't kill them. I killed one upstairs, but I'm doing good. Just, there's practically a forest on this table. Here I love when it. We all sat down. The house plants and the candles, the right. ambiances, much like Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Do you have a little mister thing? You walk around and go, psst, 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 oh, that's next. Right. You need I, that. Wait, wait, sometimes I get home and the, the upstairs house plants are like in the sink or like by the windowsill. And like the upstairs plants need like a rotation too of how yeah. it's like. Do you talk I've, to the plants? I put them in the bathroom when I water them really well because I don't. So oh, they those drain. poor plants. 
<laughs> no, I don't use that bathroom up there. Okay. Um, <laughs> the poor plants are like, no. Yeah, it's, it's nice and I love that. Do ambience. you talk to the plants? I think you should. No. Well, I always talk to Max. Yeah. I still talk to Max. <laughs> yeah. But no, the plants just okay. do their thing. Yeah, uh, apparently, if you play classical music, or, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What's in your world? Miss Jessica? Um, I had a delightful day of teaching kids today, which is always a good day. Um, I was on the Peloton by 4.30 this morning, so it makes for a long day, but a good day. Um, got some coffee, got some more coffee, tried to find more coffee, and that, that that's about it. Yeah. Um, yep, so it was a good week, you know, really exciting. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday is Veterans Day. I don't know when this airs, but... Thursday is, is Veterans Day, um, so we get um, a day off of kids, and we get meetings all day, so it's a... And then on Friday, mm-hmm. listen to this, yeah, yeah. we get to play kickball. Nice. Oh, I love kickball. I know. <laughs> Could we come and play with kickball with the kids? No, that would be awesome. No, no. There's nothing like nailing someone in the face playing kickball just to get them out. It's dodgeball with the feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm talking about playing like shortstop and getting that runner going, oh, yeah, you just you chuck it as hard and as you can. And you get them in the legs and they trip. That. Oh, I like that, but I like a good like a good old cheek shot. <laughs> so last year when COVID was a thing and they couldn't play a lot of sports inside, et cetera, et cetera, one socially distant sport that they all could play was kitch- kickball. And it was so great to see kickball like in the field again nice. like, as a kid. Like, nice. you know, I think it was a really cool thing. I okay. like to heckle them from my upstairs window, but that's besides the point. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. So we just got back from Philly Bike Expo. It was last weekend. Just Whoa, I never... Uh, I, I thought you did. You were talking really about know. plants. No, no plants. What else I, you got to go over? Not a whole lot. Okay. I did... I rode yesterday. Well, you talked about yeah. that. I got I got some new clothes I got to talk about. You want to talk about everything twice. Okay, go ahead. No, I put it... I finally put the hitch on my Subaru. Yeah. So I can yeah. put a bike rack on the Subaru. Nice. Yeah, Adventure Mobile. Nice. I did it all by myself and almost killed myself twice without I, telling I my wife. told you you come. I help you. I was that happy to help. was heavy and I almost crushed my face. Happy to help. Because I did it without a lift. Happy to help. Actually, it was very easy install. Mm. Yeah. Really, all you had to do was did it use like the mounting tie downs. Like, I, I, I had to fish them. They're like, oh, they're complaining about like internal routing through the frame of the car. No, until you do a Cervelo P5 or something from like six years ago, <laughs> ten years ago, they don't know anything about routing internally. <laughs> You've got big giant like, steel tubing. You could just stick your fish something. My adoption there, yeah. lady's calling me, so I'm taking a break. Okay. Talk about Philly. Okay, we're going to talk about so So all of us just got back from Philly Bike Expo. We were up there Saturday. We were there all day. All day? Uh, it it was, was a great day. It was. We left very early in the morning, and we didn't get... We, it, was a, it was a dark time, dark time trip. Dark time, dark time. So yep, we left in the morning right. before us. So Jess came up with his um, a really. I I just thought it was a fantastic idea for us to all come up with our favorite booths that we encountered at Philly Bikes Expo for whatever reason. It didn't have to be it, no, it's a no, personal exactly personal like it, apparel something like that. But like some booths that really stuck out to us that we were like, wow, those are worth mentioning on the podcast. Yep. So do you want to start? Do you want to give me your favorite booths or do you want me to do it no i would like you to go first okay i'll absolutely go first so the first one that comes to mind for me tanglefoot they were out of vermont analog cycles oh they had the really good display they had a very good display beautiful yeah. display of bikes and they had like a fireplace that was pushing out smoke but it wasn't a real fireplace it was smoke no machine. they had the deer on the wall yeah, yeah. it's just it was just so well done there was so much thought and effort put into that and you know, in this world of, of post COVID where we didn't have these kinds of shows for a very long time, they either poured their heart into mm-hmm. it or I, I think some people kind of may have, I don't want to say it, but phoned it in mm-hmm. um, because you never know if something's going to happen or not. Mm-hmm. But they, they went the extra, extra mile. So it was Tangle Foot, yeah. Angle, uh, um, Analog Cycles, and they're out of Vermont. And actually, I got a card from them and I would very much like to get them on the podcast at some time to talk about Vermont Gravel. Yeah, that would be super so. cool. They were really helpful. I know I was hanging back, but you had a nice old conversation oh, yeah. with the people there. So yeah. that was really nice. Uh, my second one is going to be um, Where I Fell in Love, the Wolf Tooth Otso. <laughs> oh my it was so funny because I would have questions about the bike. 
and was going over and I was talking to Mike from Otso and then I would go over and talk to Nate from Hush Money <laughs> and then I would he'd be like okay well now go back over and talk you're gonna ask Mike that. we Joey and I would go back over to Otso and we'd talk to them, and we'd go back over to Nate we're just like this half hour window of time where we must have gone back and forth multiple times and I actually one of the last times we were walking back over there I told Joey I said now we're gonna have some very specific questions and all I'm gonna do is say I'm interested in this bike and I've brought along my mechanic <laughs> oh my and he's gonna ask you these questions <laughs> <laughs> so it was things like internal routing and all this other kind of stuff with the di2 which is somewhat you know problematic when when he said no there is no internal routing and i'm di2 um he was kind of surprised when joe and i were both like well that's it's not a, the end of the world it's not a big deal he says most times when people ask you that question mm-hmm. and they say no it's not like an immediate oh this isn't for me mm-hmm. i'm okay with that because i know that a titanium frame is a forever frame and who knows five years from now we'll all be wireless we won't need to worry about internal yeah, routing because yeah. we're gonna be wireless yeah. except for our brake cable so um my last favorite booth and there's a very specific reason for this is bishop cycles out of baltimore did you see the head badges on their frames because they're a maryland company mm-hmm. And it's the the bishop. It's like a chess bishop piece. I did see that. It was and, in the last row, I think. Yep. If it, I'm uh, on- I, can't, I can't remember where it was. But it was the Maryland flag behind that. And some of them were sort of like this grayscale. And other ones were done in color. I just I took pictures after pictures after mm-hmm. pictures of that little head badge. Because yeah. it just was so, I don't know. It just it struck a chord with me. So those were my three favorite booths. But what was the the thing that surprised you or the one that what was the other weird the talking about the part that surprised us? You know, was out there or. Well, I've got my three sort of cool innovation. Products. Okay, let's go. You want to go with those let's two? Go. OK, first one is was at the Redshift booth okay. with their pedals. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they have got these pedals that, that are lit up. One side is white and one side is red. And as the pedal rotates, the color changes. Yeah. So from a commuter's perspective, you always got the, the white light facing the front mm-hmm. and you've always got the red white light facing the rear. Um, just in, just in and of itself, mm-hmm. that innovation, super cool. Yeah. But then you take the light and it's all put together with magnets you can pop the light out of the pedal and mm-hmm. they've got clips where you can put those lights on different places of the bike and you can tell it whether you want it to be red or white. Oh, that's awesome. So it's like all of this multifaceted, yeah. multi-use, multi-purpose, um, rechargeable magnets. It was just so much fun and innovation. I just thought it was that, really super cool. And that's what Redshift is known for, innovation. That booth was packed the whole yeah. day. Yeah. Like the whole day yeah. there was people constantly standing out in front of them looking at their stuff my second one and and i don't know um jess you may not have been over there when we were talking to these guys um roland at re load bags reload bags has got this they call it the brap wrap was it like the fanny pack looking thing yeah yeah but it's like it was just so innovative. A, a tube slid all the way across the back to provide the cushioning on your back. My back. All these little pockets to put nutrition, tools, and it was all like if you didn't want to wear a jersey, yeah. but yep. yet you would miss jersey pockets. So if you wanted to wear that like under a flannel mm-hmm. or something, it's like basically an independent jersey pocket system. Yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about, Joe. You were there when we were looking at those, yeah. right? Yeah. That's just super, super cool innovation so those are my three favorite booths and since joe you weren't here i'm going to recap really quickly yep tanglefoot wolf tooth otso and bishop were my three booths okay and then my two product innovations were the redshift pedals and what's the, tanglefoot the, tanglefoot was the uh, analog cycles it was oh yeah, a, yeah, yeah 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 out of Vermont. The deer yep and the little stove with the fog machine i just thought the booth was really kind of very cool. nice very very yeah. well done um, so if you guys got any favorite booths or products or anything, I'm ready. go for it. I'm ready. So, um, the first one is going to be end grain. Okay. Um, any big guesses on what that was? People, people, people. Yeah, it was yes. the coffee place. <laughs> so I, we were in the car as soon as we left your house. I'm like, I know what your three are. And the first one was that. And yeah. He did. He did guess all three of them. However, um, their coffee was great. 
Um, they were the only people like serving coffee in this little place. They were doing press coffee. It was amazing. Um, there was a steady line all the time there because people need their caffeine. Oh, yeah. So um, in the morning, I got a latte, an almond milk latte, was, which was phenomenal. Um, and then I went back for, I think, another cup of coffee in the afternoon. And it was just a really good cup of coffee. So I was very, very pleased. Um, they were great. I um, liked that one. Okay. The next one is going to be Paper Trail Gravel Travel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I liked their um, package deals of like going on a bike trip. They take care of the catering. They take care of your bike. They're riding with somebody like in your, your area. Um, and I just thought it was a really cool, all-inclusive trip that you could take with a significant other or with a friend. Um, as a really great excursion. So one of the things that I will I'll piggyback on that. Go ahead. Um, you know, coming from the world of, of tour, being a bike tour guide leader and, and all of that. In talking with Paul, he told us that for every three participants, they have one guide on the bike. Yeah. Yep. For every three yep. participants. From someone who bike. leads tours all the time, you were kind of like. I was impressed. Very soon, like, yeah. I was impressed. I mean, they're doing things right. Yeah, Yeah. and for somebody who is not so good at changing tires or changing tubes or doing any sort of bike maintenance... um, You don't worry about that anyway. Well, if well, Joey yeah. wasn't there, <laughs> well, you know she's she's, she's stepping, really, no no I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you back on that because she's stepping out and she did sixty miles even though she oh yeah you know she did sixty miles no, no, up there on no I just parks. my favorite part when she was talking to Paul was like me zero equation I'm like can I go on the trip <laughs> you can come too but like if I'm having a b- bad moment you know yeah. like we well, you just don't go on this you just don't wing well, this trip I, I don't mean to be rude but joey goes on trips all the time without me okay so. but, but but think about this for a second too from y'all's perspective if if you just wanted to just go off and leave joey because yeah, that's what it goes <laughs> you know you could just ride ahead but you would have some port you talk about the rider in general no no on the, on the ride, on the ride it's, it's like the dating game yeah. uh so that's um, it. but anyway, agree. I thought cool. it was a great package deal. I would definitely, you know, if I had friends giving this as a gift, I think that'd be a really cool gift. The expensive um, gift. Expensive but. gift, but you know, you know, you go on to things. <laughs> so friends, you know. a serious. Joey thing. and I haven't taken a honeymoon yet, so we might be doing it for paper tra- paper trail. So. Okay, what else? Um, Sad Velo um, and their whole thing oh, yeah. about Sad Velo was ride bikes, go to therapy. Um, and I can tell you on one of my worst days, Joey told me to get on my bike and I rode my indoor training bike and I was crying all at the same time. And he was like, please just keep riding. Please yep. just keep riding. And that was all he was saying in his calmest voice ever. Um, and I solely agree that the bike is therapeutic, but I think there is more things you need to do, um, than just ride your bike. You need to ride your bike, which is therapeutic, but you also need to go to therapy. You also need to take your medicine. Um, and I like that they were incorporating riding their bike and going to therapy all together. Sad Velo Cycling. Sad Velo Cycling. Yep. Yep. It's a very small, it's very small right now. Um, I think they said today on their Instagram, if they had 500 people, they would get a, give them a $5 gift card to Wawa. Um, which, you know, it's small. They're a small company. They're just trying to get people on Instagram in their business getting their likes and it's not even a business it's a five five oh one three so cool um that was awesome in my cool product i spent a very long time talking to primal um the clothing company because primal is owned by a female um and they really do pride themselves on female attire so what they would do is send you a whole bunch of stuff in your line you would try it on and you would just ship it back mm. whatever you like you keep and whatever you don't like you just send right back that's cool and, uh, for, send it back. No suit for you. For somebody who is uncomfortable with her size and the bike and uncomfortable in clothing, I think that is a really cool way of getting more people on bikes in the appropriate sizing. Could you? Could you? You're going to follow up with them because I. I where you, that's something interesting. You're going to talk to them, right? About um, doing something. I don't know. Maybe you are. I no, know. I wasn't. But you oh, okay. could do it. I no, would I'm just, love I was that. just curious what they do with the returns because I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about clothing returns and online ordering of late Mm -hmm. and that the vast majority of clothing that is returned because of sizing Mm -hmm. 
actually goes in the trash. Yeah. Doesn't even get donated. It goes in the trash. That's um we we will I would love to file follow up for primal. Yeah. Um, but I think it was um I think it was pretty neat of what they were doing yeah. with their clothing. Yeah. Body positive. So Joey, do you have any Oh, uh, Philly Bike Expo. It was nice seeing everyone. I don't know if I have tops because there was a lot of cool stuff. Mm. Um, I got to talk to like multiple reps to set up some stuff or talk to potential new businesses uh, for the store and then go get to see a lot of friends. It was nice seeing everyone uh, and make some new... F- I don't know if I have any new friends. I think I made a couple new friends. Uh, yeah, I think I, I made a couple I made new, new friends. friends. Um, well, we'll see. I'm very not a friendly guy. You know. Um, I-, I was following you around, though. We, we were kind of moving together, and it yeah. was... If you get half of the new products of people you talk to about putting stuff in the shop, yeah. you're going to have a little whole stuff. bunch of new stuff in the shop, um, which is cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, so I don't have fav- I, I ever say everyone knows that Nittany Mountain Works is a huge favorite of mine, so... Mm-hmm. Them. I love what uh, Paul is doing with... Uh, paper trail and gravel travel reload stuff was cool i never gave them much of an eye um but i did love what you talked about with the little pack piece yeah Yeah. great company i just uh, have my heart with evan (laughs) um and then like i said i love checking out the things like wolf tooth and industry nine and all the little bits and the color doodads and who was it we talked to industry freddie 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 capo yeah Freddie Capo has been my rep forever, and the only time we ever see each other was at Philly. Um, and then I haven't seen him in two years. I was like, hey, Freddie, it's me, Joe. And you have masks on, too. And he's like, oh, yeah. And then it's like, yeah, hey, I owe you paperwork and stuff. But I don't I don't think that that didn't bother. We're going to talk a little bit about no, that. No, no, that wasn't a problem. It, but problem. it was nice because it was it was also nice running into him because I forgot I, I need to do stuff for him. I ran into there. Mm. David from Wahoo and such. Um, I love the Atsos. I've loved the Atsos for a while. I've been... And well, like Phil, um, you Phil know, Thomas had one. Yeah, Phil Thomas. Yeah, mm-hmm. loves his. Yeah, it's he so got rid of versatile. it. He, he got did? rid of it. Yeah, yeah. I saw him because I've been nutcracker. I've been stalking Otto. That was like lately. his one bike. I, I've been stalking Otto. Man, we need to get him a bike if that's what. It's coming well, to. he he made a comment on on a post, and you know how it's like shows you people you yeah. know. And I saw he made a comment. It's like, oh, I wish I'd never sold that bike or something. Yeah. So, um, yeah. no, I think. Uh, well, uh, there's did. it was there's so much. I love the pho and pho, and I love the cheesesteak. Yep, I love the Philly experience. I want to go back on a non weekend and go actual two paper trail, try some other cheesesteaks. I want to be a tourist. I cool. love Philly. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to have time to yeah. be a tourist in places like it's that? It's just so close to Jersey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. All right, do you want to jump over and, and run through Strava? I saw Club Jess's picture in seven bars there. Before we get to our guest tonight, <laughs> sorry, Strava Club. All right, my my Strava didn't work yesterday, and none of my stuff got uploaded. But we have Jonathan Paul from Verona, Pennsylvania, with one eighty four point nine. Lindsay O'Connor from Middleburg, Virginia, with one twenty four point seven. In Reese's <laughs> Cup, Stanley <laughs> from Go Green Racing from Tyler, Texas, with his peanut butter cups at two hundred one point six. Good job, y'all. Nice job, guys. We are on a. St- I think we went up because I think it was ninety something last week, mm-hmm. but it was one hundred two point two. And we were at 784, 799, 779, sorry. Strava.com forward slash, forward slash clubs, forward slash gravel travel dirt. Look me up. My name's always changing. <laughs> I was looking for a Scran Strangler the other day and I couldn't find him. I was like, is he yeah, going back? Yeah, I'm, I'm working up something new. So, Jess, this is the point where we usually have some questions that you got off of Instagram, but you don't have any this week, so uh, that's okay. No, but, but I went to the Women's Bike Symposium. Okay, you want to talk about that, Philly Bike Expo? It was awesome. Yeah. Um, we met the head of PBE, um, and it was um, talking about females in the industry, sharing our stories, and it was cool that every people in the, the group shared. It just wasn't like the person instructing, sharing their story of how they got into bikes. Uh, but other people in the, the expo shared what they did did and how they got to bikes cool. so that was really cool we all exchanged numbers which was really awesome because most of us are in the philly pennsylvania maryland new jersey ish delaware area um so we all shared numbers she gave us our business card um and it was just really cool to meet up with fellow females in the industry cool. um even though i am not in the industry i am a cyclist um so I think you've been on the podcast now enough, and you're you're regular now. 
So I, I think you can. I feel like everybody at home is crying, like, "Oh no, not Wes anymore." <laughs> no, they're not. But I guess they. I guess they haven't gotten the hint. So I'm going to give the plug. If you've got questions, particularly as they relate to women in cycling, at Jess with two S's underscore Santora on Instagram. Correct. Correct. Send her a question. And Miss Ginger Grinder. <laughs> No. But if you are going to message me, um, we're trying to decide if I should do Gravel Worlds or Steamboat. So also send that to me because I'm not really sure which one to do. Okay. Well, you're going to Gravel Worlds. Well, I don't know which one. Give you a little I'm update. I'm just doing Rooted Vermont. On Gravel Worlds. They're up to, I think, close to 500 women. Yeah, I think that's week. awesome. I was I was texting Jason the whole day or encouraging him and all these things because... I am going to Gravel Worlds. I have my Airbnb. If I have to stay in that whole place by myself, that's fine. It's only $84 a night, so all y'all can just... <laughs> well, I want, we're putting together... It's a only $84 a night? For the Airbnb, oh, yes. God. And it sleeps like seven people and it's you 10 miles like 300, from the start. You pay $400 a night for a one, $500. See, this is when you go, get in early. I was I was a full year ahead. True. Now, what'll happen we might be to a point, like, though, we can book anymore. the hotel for unpaved now. Remember? We are. Oh. We are. Don't do that now. No. Oh, okay. Lord. <laughs> I got 30 things I'm doing right now. I'll be up till midnight. Uh, joining us now is Vihan from the YouTube channel Mountain Road Rides. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive into the Mountain Road Rides video, YouTube video channel. Welcome. It is great to have you here with us, Vihan. Hi, welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be on the podcast. Uh, I've been listening to a bunch of your episodes over the, the months and years. And uh, cool. So, uh, thank you. I love it. <laughs> uh, where are you calling from tonight? So, yeah, I am based here in Northern Virginia um, in Great Falls. Um, and uh, I think you guys are familiar with the CNO Canal. You've written on that a oh, couple yeah. of times. I've seen those videos. And so uh, it goes through the Great Falls Park. Um, and we're just on the other side of the river. Instead of the Maryland side, we're on the Virginia side. So uh, okay. that park is not too far away from me. And uh, so it's uh, one of my favorite local stomping grounds where you can go and ride. So you've got <laughs> the gravel inst- bike. almost like instant access to really prime dirt. That's awesome. I think. We kill yeah, that. so that that's that's I I know I'm, I'm pretty you know uh, privileged to have that park so close by, and then uh, the the real area where you know you guys have also ridden there is uh, Loudoun County Gravel. Mm. Um, yeah. That is just uh, absolute gems. So that's about forty minutes away, and so. Uh, Whenever I get the opportunity, I want to go out there. I mean, that is just absolutely spectacular gravel riding. Yeah, we, we, we unfortunately don't have a lot of gravel right at our fingertips. So uh, <laughs> we're very jealous of those that do. And, and, and that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, to tell, before we get into the YouTube channel, um, introduce yourself to our listeners. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, I think what I'm very impressed with is you got my name right. Um, <laughs> the pronunciation of my name. Um, that's always a, a, a thing that, that trip up people quite easily is the, the VR name. Um, I do my so, homework. I do my homework. Yeah, yeah, I can I can tell. I mean, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm originally from South Africa. My native language is, is Afrikaans. And so the VR is actually, it's a V sound, but it's spelled W-I-E-H-A-N. Um, and so, uh, yeah, originally from South Africa, grew up there, um, small town, just about an hour south of Johannesburg. Um, and I think that's where I sort of got my first real taste of, of open, wide open country roads mm. and the ability to go and explore with bike and uh, just ride my, my bike on, on both dirt and, you know, just paved roads as we had there in that area. And, uh, yeah, just... Uh, my background is uh, basically as a financial analyst. I've been trained in, in finance and throughout the years I've worked um, in investment banking and other financial positions. Um, but then uh, since moving to the U.S., um, well, actually, let me just say that as well. I, I met my wife, um, Kristen, who is from the U.S. And uh, so uh, that was about maybe nine years ago. Uh, we got married in 2014 and we lived there in South Africa for a while. And then uh, after a couple of years of living there, uh, we moved over to the U.S. to be closer to her family and everybody who's who's based here in, in Virginia. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, so 
the YouTube channel is a bit of a creative outlet, I, I guess, and coming from that's, the financial analyst world. Uh, that's right. I, I like to think of you know exercising both sides of my brain. So uh, you know okay. the analytical side, that's where I get my numbers and fixes. And I think that's why I love nerding out on all the technical stuff of biking as well. You know, I can easily go into all the details of you know uh, the watts and calculations around bitrometry and all those sort of things. You know the more nerdy stuff if you want to get into like spreadsheets i'm pretty good at designing spreadsheets so i can go and work out gear ratios yeah. to the t and 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 <laughs> you, know? you fit right in with some that. of our listeners ted and, <laughs> yeah. and, and chris with their spreadsheet decision trees and yeah, I, i've yeah. been known to put together a spreadsheet or two from time to time <laughs> it's we get take a little bit of rivet over that so yeah uh, but then um, for me the creative side is i think you know Kristen is actually the, the real creative in, in the family. She's a trained photographer, professional by trade. And um, so uh, I, I love that we can kind of complement each other and, and, you know, doing that as well. So she's very much an instrumental part of, of Mountain Road Ride and the videos that we produce. And uh, a lot of behind the scenes stuff is also done by her. And so uh, I think, you know, that kind of balance between the analytical business side and then also the creative side. At, uh, it's I was something that... I was watching one of your videos earlier today, and it was the one from down um, in Floyd, Virginia. And uh-huh. it looked like it was kind of a miserable day. Oh, yeah. and, and, and you encountered her at the wooden bridge. That's and, right. Yeah. And I think you actually said to talking to the cameras like really hard to get back on the bike in, in something like this when you've just encountered somebody that you love. <laughs> you couldn't get rid of the car. So, uh, so yeah. she's obviously a big part of the channel too. But doesn't she also have... Um, her own little mountain road channel yeah, on YouTube or something. Exactly. So we split up the content on our on our on our web page. The main page is mountainroad.com, but um, we kind of focus it on two two sides: mountain road ride. That's obviously all the gravel cycling related stuff on my end, and then on Kristen's side, she focuses on the natural living, um, non toxic lifestyle, and um, gardening, cooking. That's her passions in life. So when 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 I'm not riding, um, or actually, my let's say say this, you know, my payback for all the services she gives and help out with the, out my side of the channel, I've got to go build some garden boxes. And so and I don't mean like to so, I don't mean to cut you <laughs> That's off. That's up my alley too. But we are noticing, or I am noticing, your house plants in the background, uh. and my <laughs> husband has um, a small forest on our kitchen table, all over the house, house but a lot on the table. <laughs> <laughs> well great i love it um well i'm not the blonde person that's definitely Kristen's side and that little lemon tree over there is what she keeps on life so uh yeah that's that's her passion <laughs> so um what what sparked your interest in gravel cycling beyond you know what you're doing is, uh, we all as a kids you know you get out and you ride your bikes but mm-hmm. you know in in the world of gravel so kind of what sparked your interest in in gravel cycling yeah i think it it ties back to my connection with South Africa because as I mentioned earlier, you know, I lived in this small town and, you know, the dirt roads there were um, quite extensive as well and the ability to go on both paved and off-road. Um, and, and in South Africa, the mountain biking scene is, is pretty huge. I mean, you Ooh. have world-class events like the Cape Epic out there. Um, and uh, so after a couple of years of road cycling, I also got into mountain biking, tried my hand at um, cross-country mountain biking and uh then when i discovered gravel only after moving to the us i was like this is this is the mm. perfect combination of both those disciplines i get to exercise my endurance capabilities from the road but i can use all my technical skills that i picked up on the mountain biking side because a lot of these gravel roads they they do require you know good bike oh, yeah. handling mm-hmm. skills as well and so being able to to combine those two uh, it was just a perfect combination for me of of both but I, I think I also want to just tie in with my my connection with the finance world because um, I think this is something that I want to do with the channel is I, I feel like I can relate to that sort of nine to five person who works in the corporate world, you know, who's sort of stuck behind a screen all day. Mm. And uh, that, that was me, you know, building Excel spreadsheets and financial reports and all those sort of things. And for me, I needed kind of a bit of escape. I, I, I wanted more. I wanted to be outside. I am an outdoor kind of person. And so it almost felt like a part of me was always, oh, you know, lacking or dying when, when I'm just sitting in front of a computer. Mm-hmm. And, and when I discovered gravel, it was also just the ability to get out there and explore and see the world and 
see all the beautiful natural surroundings and that instantly you know that got me hooked and once i uh, i was on the first couple of gravel rides it's like uh, this is just amazing and, that, and that the places we can go <laughs> that comes through in your videos you're it's it you really do communicate well yeah how the environment that we get to ride our bikes in is just so amazing it was it was fun we played um before i left my shop we were playing your videos and we i was showing them the unpaved one and just it really brought them into it like yeah. all my staff members it yeah. was pretty cool yeah, yeah. i yeah. i actually um showed your video to my wife and my mother-in-law and i was like you guys want to know what i did this weekend yeah. look at this check out this and, one <laughs> and we sat there and ate dinner and and watched your video and they were just you know it was like it was really cool. It was it was really do yeah. you do a good job, a great job of storytelling the event as a ride. I I, I think and it it's it's I'm a little jealous. You do you just do a really good job, a great <laughs> Thank you. job. No, I really appreciate this feedback. I mean, and it's it's feedback like this. I, I get a couple of comments like this on the videos as well. And and what I always write back is like this this is kind of feedback that that motivates me to get out there and want to make more and yeah. uh i i feel like i i want to share my passion uh, this is my passion and then something i'm I, I really enjoy doing and the spin-off hopefully from that is that it'll inspire other people to get out there and mm. that, that's sort of my biggest goal with these videos is just to to inspire the community to get out there no matter your fitness level no matter your access to to riding opportunities you can get out there and, and even in your neighborhood you know there's always places to explore new new ways to go and ride and yeah. uh that that for me is is, yeah. is the end result and uh yeah I, I get great joy out of hearing stories like this so thank you <laughs> so I, I always ask this question when we have guests on and and it's it's interesting how in line the responses all, always are, and I'd love to get your 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 take on this. What's your personal take on the current popularity of of gravel cycling as a discipline? Yeah, and no, I love it. I, I mean, I just love seeing this this what started off as this grassroots movement is just you know exploding and it's growing, and um, I think it creates a, an excitement for people to want to be a part of it um, as they see it growing and gaining more traction and popularity within the media um, channels at, it, it one, you know, it, it just connects with people and it gives them the opportunity to get outside. And like, like I said, you know, if we ultimately inspire people to get outdoors mm. and just break away from computer screens for a while and go ride their bike, that's, that's awesome. So uh, I don't, I don't care, you know, if there's all this other, you know, drama around, you know, should it be still in its infancy and uh, kept at a smaller scale? If it gets people on bikes, then that's, that's awesome. More butts on bikes, more butts on bikes. Speaking of bikes, what bikes yeah. do you have in your stable? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, th this is my topic. I, I love uh, nerding out on some bikes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I currently have my gravel bike. That's the, um, the three T Explorer that you see in, in, in the most of my, my gravel ride videos. Um, that is sort of my go-to right now. Um, love that bike. Just so versatile. Um, run it with the 700 C wheels, run it with 650 B wheels, and you can just pretty much take it anywhere. Um, and then my trusty old road bike, the good steed, you know, it's been uh, with me since 2014. So it's a track to money. Um, and that is just mostly set up as my, my road bike. But uh, I, I've also done a video on the channel actually um, to convert an old uh, rim brake road bike hmm. to something that's, I would call it light duty gravel riding. Um, uh, and I've taken that bike out with some, Panaracer Gravel King tires in the 26 millimeter version, mm -hmm. um, and that can go on gravel if you if you're careful and you pick your lines. Uh, you can you can actually get away with an old school road bike on on gravel as well. So sometimes I like to you know push the limits on that, <laughs> especially like on the towpath. On the towpath, yeah, that's can, perfect for the yeah. towpath. Exactly, yeah. 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 Uh, your your video catalog now. Now people who haven't seen your channel. Um, hopefully after they've, they've, you know, listened to us, that's the first thing they're going to do is they're going to jump over and start digging through your catalog. Your catalog is pretty doggone deep. How long have you been producing videos and, and how many of them have you done? Yeah. Yeah. No. So it started with Chris and I, um, back in 2018, I believe. Um, and, uh, we, we first used 
the the one channel um, jointly and we try to split our content, but we realize that, you know, we want to focus on both our passions separately um, and just kind of build that niche. So she she split off, started doing the mountain road ride video, uh, mountain road life videos. And with me, you know, I kept on with the ride stuff. So in total, we've got about 120 ish videos right now. Um, so it's, wow. it's grown nicely over the years. Um, and then since starting with the gravel ride of the week, that playlist is, 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 being continuously being added to um and so we're currently on 32 i think i was gonna ask you how many, how many are in there so that that yeah. that's sort of the piece that kind of like got my attention and and really because i was looking at the names of your videos it was like unpaved yep that's one in our backyard gravista that's one in our backyard down in floyd that's one in our backyard dirty <laughs> kitten one in, you know it just was on and on and over and over and over again it was kind of like uh it was really cool the familiarity um, of what we have here and, and with those rides being in our backyard. Yeah. So but of, I think you can agree. We we're so spoiled for, for the, the riding opportunities that we've got here in Virginia. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just the places we can ride, we've got the Shenandoahs, we've got the, the Blue Ridge mountains. Um, we, we've got closer to, you know, DC, we've got the dope off. We've got people who want to be on just pavement. We've got the W and OD path right here with us. Um, and then just the vast expand in network of gravel roads throughout Virginia. Mm -hmm. That's only Virginia. And never mind uh, Maryland and Pennsylvania, all these other states that are close by as well. So um, I think we, we see so much media on the West and, you know, Colorado and, and, and some of those other mm -hmm. uh, Utah and, and, and some of those sort of Midwest uh, gravel races happening. But we've got a ton in our backyard and we're kind of spoiled for choice. And we do need to protect them, though. I yeah. you know there's yeah. there's there's lots of motion and movement to introduce pavement onto some of those right out in Loudoun County, and I, I think we do need to to make sure we're we're making our voices known. Maybe we should go protest Congress. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, that's on the internet now. <laughs> um, out of all the videos that you've done, which one's your favorite? Oh, that's such a difficult question. Uh, I, I I hate to like pinpoint one because for me, you know, each each has like a a specific category that I like mm -hmm. to put it in. So I think of you know, if you want to think of like great winter type riding, that was Gravelocity. Um, if you want to think of like epic weather conditions, that was the recent Unpaved, and mm -hmm. you alluded to the Tour de Dirt earlier as well. So those were two like really muddy, messy races, really challenging from that standpoint, and extremely challenging in terms of elevation that was gravista flat out I, you know yeah. i those blue ridge mountains serious serious elevation in there um but but one that i will kind of uh, sort of highlight and i think you know they put such a attention to detail on this on this race um and that's alex and chris with their mm -hmm. um dirty mm -hmm. kitten events mm -hmm. um i know they've been on your podcast before yeah. and uh i you know i i, I love connecting with them whenever I get the op get opportunity at these events. Um, so I did both their uh, Grally Cat event, which is in, in the springtime, and then the gra gravel race. Um, and I must say that Grally Cat was, that was something special. That was something unique because it wasn't your traditional race. It was more of a sort of scavenger hunt kind of thing. And you're mm -hmm. racing from checkpoint to checkpoint and collecting cars and then taking yeah. it to another checkpoint. And it's just a totally different format. And, and I said in that video as well, I don't think I've had this much fun since I've been a kid because you could, <laughs> you could build your own, own course. You, you know, you weren't stuck to like, this is the route profile that you've got to follow. You could cut short the route if you wanted to and follow your own direction and go and explore a new part of the property if you wanted to. So that was the sort of a standout for me and just being something different, something unique. And they also mm -hmm. put so much, attention to detail into that event um that you know it, it stands out as, as as something that was something something special on the calendar we um are, are you gonna are you gonna do their um uh, the dirty kitten winter training series that they do I, in so, january uh, so i was rolling in for that in the year before so mm -hmm. this year um from january to march but i'm looking into that again because there's always a nice yeah. way to com connect with with their group and they've got quite an extensive community that oh yeah that they uh follow and uh so yeah that's always nice because they got the indoor training rides normally on swift and you can get on those community rides um so that's that's fun i, yeah, I really is. enjoyed that yep. yeah um so what about a favorite ride not a favorite video, but a favorite ride. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> again, a hard one. Uh, but false. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with with that Grally Cat again. You know yeah. that that was for me a ride that stands out um, as as one that uh, I, I would put as my highlight for the year. Have you and Chris ever compared spreadsheets? Because you know Chris <laughs> is a very big spreadsheet guy. <laughs> <himself>. <laughs> I, I I didn't know that, but I know oh, he's yeah. so good at with you know the back end computer stuff and 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 their coding yeah. that even goes into their winter training program because mm-hmm. that's what made it so fun they you know he built this whole leaderboard and yeah. all your your ride metrics just filter in there and you can compete with everybody so uh, i i have no doubt that he's good with with, with oh, excel yeah. as well so we'll, we'll have to c- connect and, uh, at some time <laughs> all right let, let's switch gears for just a minute and let's talk tech I want to yeah. talk about the cameras that you use and the setup and the mounts that you use. This is what use. I want to talk about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, so well, let's dive into that. I know you How probably... long a ride actually is because you're filming. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay, cameras. Which cameras and mounts? Let's start there. Okay, um, so for me, the GoPros are the go-to. Um, I know there are other action sport cameras out there, but in terms of stabilization, GoPros just stand out so, so much. Um, so I have two of them, um, both the Euro 7 and then the Euro 9. Um, I particularly like the 7. I think if I could pick again, um, I, I would, instead of buying the 9, I would buy the 8, just purely for the form factor. Um, the, the, the 7 and the 8, they're smaller, they're lighter. Um, and so... If you've seen my Rockdown Rambler video, um, then you'll know that I, I like to ride with one of the cameras on my wrist. Um, and in that particular event, one of the <laughs> cameras so actually fell off the wrist <laughs> um, and I had to run back and go and get it. Let the, like a whole Chris Froome style running up the mountain um, without my bike to go and get my camera. Um, but so uh, I like the 7 because it's like you can mm. you know pretty much move around with that camera a lot. And then the, the Euro 9, that one is pretty good for, for photos as well. So whenever I'm out on rides and there's opportunity to take good photos, then then I like to use that. Um, and then the other sort of camera that, that goes along with all everything that we do is the one that Kristen uses because um, a lot of the shots that we get isn't just from the ride. It's sort of from the sidelines as well. And uh, she, she really works hard behind the scenes to maybe drive out on the course and find a particular spot and capture more of the creative shots low down or shallow depth the field or with a zoom lens or something like that. Um, and that's where, you know, we, we make use of a, a Canon M50. So that's a, a sort of more of a vlogging video that we vlogging um, camera that we have that uh, also gets used for, for those rides. Um, I'm an M50 but, but, guy too. I got an M50, so I, I, okay. that's a nice little camera, sharp. Yeah, very compact and you know, it does its thing and reliable for us. So we've we've enjoyed that. <laughs> I will say now I have a Hero Eight. Um, I, it seems to be sort of like the stepchild. There's lots of like things that work for for um, up to the seven, and then they've dropped the eight, and then they have like little you know extra market things that are work for the nine and the ten. That eight seems to be this weird little stepchild that sits in the middle, and it, it's I like it. It's very good. Anything seven forward, the stabilization, like you said, mm-hmm. on point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that eight, I mean, it's a great little camera, but it just seems like there's things that just don't want to work for it. Yeah, so. yeah. And I stole your wrist mount, your your <laughs> wrist strap. I I actually went and googled that. I saw you wearing that thing, and I was like, uh-huh. I need to try that because I aspire sometimes to make videos, and Joey knows this, and. I struggle. I, you know, it's a little different, but I, I did a ride yesterday just for video work and I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> so much. Yeah. Cause Joe, you want to talk about it with the time it takes. Oh yeah. I've always understood that. And that's why half the time I'm like, screw it. I'm not, I mean, you got to go full in or nothing. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. 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 So, and like I had, I had aspirations to do stuff at unpaved. Me and, too. <laughs> and I, I worked so hard just to get So props to you, Vion, because I don't know how anyone did it as clean as you did it. <laughs> and, and actually get that much video. I yeah. just I, I took it out a couple of times at the beginning of the day, and, and then it was like, oh, my God, I just need to ride my bike. <laughs> I just yeah. need to get from point A to point B. That, um, that is a challenge, too, to keep on moving and get the shots. Because you know, like you say, you get so stuck in just recording, and uh, then, then before you know it, 
hours have gone by it's like oh shucks i still gotta finish this ride <laughs> i uh, i'm in the middle of nowhere and uh, i i'm just spending way too much time trying to get the shot from a river or whatever hey, uh, me hey, riding over a bridge hey, um, you're a tip of the spear guy too i see you up there riding with jeremiah i i see that and, <laughs> yeah. and you know joey and I, well i'm gonna speak for myself i'm not even a mid-pack guy i'm a party pack guy oh we are <laughs> definitely like, look pack. at our numbers at just unpaved <laughs> yeah we are the caboose. Uh, so that's that's tough to do all that filming and actually stay up there in the front too. So bravo for that. Uh, what's what's your creative process look like? Uh, so do you do you do you do you shoot video sort of with a specific vision in mind, or you just sort of let the cameras roll and then let the story unfold in post? Yeah, no, that's that definitely the latter um, because. As much as you like to plan, um, gravel riding is just too too uncertain. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you never know what the road is going to look like and what's going to happen if your camera is going to fall off your <laughs> wrist and you got to go back and get it. Um, so definitely just, you know, I a lot of the times I get lucky with these shots as well. And so, yeah, I do have that wrist mount and I like to, you know, get shots as best as possible. But a lot of times, to be honest, I'm just sticking it in a direction and hoping that I've got somebody <laughs> framed in that shot, you know, um, because I'm trying my best to keep my eye on the road and not crash. And that's also something I, I, I do want to mention is now, I, for the most part, I try to you know, at least do it in a safe manner. I think, you mm-hmm. know, my yeah. wife always sends me out the door with three rules when I go and ride. It's like, be safe, have fun, take photos. And I, I do it in that order as well. So I, I want to be safe and I don't want to, first of all, put myself at risk and also those people around me at risk, you know, by getting a weird shot or trying to be all creative and then causing a crash. So yeah. um, most of the time, if I get a shot, I'm lucky and I'm, I'm just thankful that I framed somebody in the shot while, you know, keeping a good line and staying safe. And um, so definitely, you know, just go out on a day, have fun and record it as it happens, because, you know, that that's, I feel like really captures the the essence of the story so much better than than trying to script it or, or force it into a direction like this. Maybe sometimes I'll have like a creative idea for a intro that I that I want to maybe do. Like I, I did like a funky '80s intro with one of the <laughs> the, the, the the Dirty Kitten um, rides. So that was sort of pre-planned because I had like the song in my head. But uh, other than that, you know, you got to let the story tell itself um, yeah. because it's 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 never going to be the same. Every every ride is different, and the terrain is so unpredictable. And um, so you can plan and then let let the let the story tell. And everybody's view of a ride and everybody's experience on a ride is different. And I, and I think that's one of the things my my takeaways from the world of gravel is that post ride community because you can get together a campfire and everybody's got a different version of the story that they Mm -hmm. of their ride they're all different they're all unique like my experience at unpaved is different than joey's is different than yours is drastically different than jess's who made up her own adventure (laughs) (laughs) hers came out to 67 miles somehow (laughs) she made a new route she She made a new route Uh, exploring Pennsylvania gravel roads. I love it. That's, and doing it twice. Do. It was just looping an area I knew twice. It was just, and Dave had a very well-marked course because every time I took a turn, it said wrong way, wrong way. So, <laughs> so what kind of plans have you got for, for next year? You, I'm assuming you're already starting to make some plans for next year. What kind of plans you got? Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely drawing up my calendar. I started a couple of weeks ago and, uh, so what I what I do want to do is explore some more. I think you know now that the the, the bug has sort of bitten me this year, of exploring a lot of the Mid Atlantic stuff. Um, I mentioned earlier, you know, there's other races obviously in other part of the country as well. And mm-hmm. I would love to, if the opportunity is there, you know, maybe travel out west, go and see a race in in either you know Colorado or perhaps you know California somewhere. Uh, I definitely. I would love to do a Vermont race. Um, I've had a, a few comments on the channel um, and Instagram, like, you got to come up here, got to come and do this race. Yes. Um, so, if, rooted. Uh, either rooted or Vermont Overland or something like that, Both. I would love to, to go and, and try one of those Vermont races as well. Have, um, have you put in the lottery for three. rooted? I'm pardon? Have you put in for the rooted lottery yet? I know that it's open. I, yeah. I, need, to, I need to move. I, I think it closes the 15th. Ooh. Okay, yeah. So that's for everyone here because I need to do it tonight. Are you uh, wait all you, four of us? I'll I'll do it. When is it? End of July. End of July? 
Well, Sugarfoot, that's my Empire State ride. Yeah, well, that's sucks my, to suck. My work. Well, you never Me know what behind, the dates. We're, go, we're going to go up. <sighs> Joey always anyway, leaves sorry. behind. That's okay. That's all right. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a little group that's forming for Gravel Worlds after we talked to Jason. Jason got us all excited about Gravel Worlds. I've actually already got my Airbnb lined up, and I can't even register yet, and I've already got my place to stay. <laughs> so um, what event next year has got the most stoke going for you? Oh, I'm looking forward to to do a bit more bike packing as well. So oh, one of the go. videos that I did was um, the Trans-Virginia, and so that one I, I only went from – um, DC to Harrisonburg, obviously not their full route because that obviously extends all the way down mm -hmm. into Damascus. Um, so what I figured is since I've done kind of the first part into Harrisonburg, um, the Virginia Endurance Series, they've got their rock star gravel mm -hmm. route. Um, and uh, so Rob Ism and, and his team, they have that awesome gravel road. There's both the trail and then the gravel version. So I, I think I'll go with the gravel. And that one runs from Harrisonburg all the way down to Roanoke. So expanding basically further south, the part that I missed with the 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 Trans Virginia, so uh, that's that's one that I'm, I'm I'm pretty excited about. I think it'll okay. be a, a multi day thing for me. I'm not one of those, well, at least not there yet, but one of those ultra endurance <laughs> races that will go through the night and try and you know see if they can set a three day course in one day. <laughs> I can't do those sort of things. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to to the Rockstar gravel. And I think they're. Um, they sort of grand depart for, for that one is around April, end of April. So um, I think that's something I'm going to, I'm going to work towards. You should um, check out Crotan Buck 50. Uh, Matt's doing something pretty cool with a whole long weekend approach where it's a, a bike packing, not race, but sort of adventure component on the front end of the race. So it's a, a 75 out to do a bike packing trip and then a 75 back and then you camp again. And then you get up the next day and you actually ride the race. So oh, it's, oh, it's okay. kind of a three day <laughs> shindig. And, uh, that, that's... That, that one, that one is on my list. I, I must say the, the crow 10 is, is, it's on my calendar. So, uh, I, I've got it on my radar, but I, I didn't know about the bikepacking version of it. So that's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. I think, I think the way that Matt's running that is you, you register for the, the ride. So you're, you're going to do the race. You're either going to do the the 50 the 100 or the, the buck 50 the full buck 50 yep. and then once you're registered you can submit to him because he's kind of keeping his numbers tight on the bike packing side mm -hmm. um you submit sort of an application and say this is who i am this is what i'm doing this is why i'd like to do it and you know then he's going to go through this process of of picking people and working that out so that he's it, it's a precursor i think what matt is doing is he's testing the waters for a big excel version of mm -hmm. croatan so it's that front end of that. I've put in my uh, my name into the to the pick for the for the little long weekend excursion. I might mm. regret that later on. But if you've never ridden down in Crotan, it's absolutely gorgeous, absolutely amazing. Flat, 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 sandy, okay. sandy, sandy. Uh, but as we all know, flat, flat, flat doesn't always mean easy, easy, easy. That means mm. pedal, pedal, pedal is what it comes down <laughs> yeah. to. So, so yeah. where can people find your YouTube channel? I'm going to put links in the show notes, but I want you to make sure to shout it out here. Oh yeah, no, thank you. So if, if they go and search on YouTube and they look for mountain road ride, um, I know the word mountain road can be a little generic. So if you add that ride part of it, you'll definitely find it. Um, and on the channel, you know, everything that we spoke about specifically the gravel ride of the week, but there's some, indoor training tips there's some reviews on there um of bike related products so i'm pretty sure people will find something that they enjoy on the channel well like i said earlier the catalog is deep you will find something that you enjoy and if you're in the mid-atlantic and you're thinking about doing a ride there's Watch a the really yeah. good chance that Vian's already been there on Mountain Road Ride. <laughs> yeah. You can go check it out and decide whether it's something you really want to do or not. <laughs> so. See, that that was the other reason, you know, you asked earlier about the, the motive for putting some of these videos together. Because that's the other thing, you know, don't see mm. a lot of like when you want to do your research on these on these rides. Yeah, there's the photos, but the photographers are only, mostly based in the most scenic spots. So they don't show you the surface level of all those those uh, different offshoots and difficult trails and stuff. And you're always left wondering, like, okay, what tire choice do I pick you know, for this mm -hmm. type of ride? So hopefully my, my rides and the videos can also then uh, kind of help people 
spec their equipment uh, a little bit better. There was one that I was looking at, Alpine Grand Fondo, I think you'd done. or Al- was mm-hmm. it? Yeah, and, and it was like, I kept looking at that going, this feels like it's mostly a road ride. And yeah. how it kind of like, dipped over into the gravel world it was it was and and so for that very reason alone i i think you hit the nail on the head it's like okay what exactly should be my my gear selection and my choices so um and where else can they find uh, uh information about all the other mess around and things that you do instagram website all that yeah so uh our, our website first of all that's uh, mountain dash road.com um and then uh the instagram handle is mtn road ride um okay. and uh, yeah they'll they'll find uh, all the photos that i take you know with my <laughs> my euro nine <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> as i'm out on my rides <laughs> and I, i'm gonna put links in the show notes folks so if you're you're looking for that um and you don't know how to use google um then you can just pop into the show notes and click that link hey thank you very much behan for joining us tonight this is a lot of fun yeah I'm, thank you i'm really glad we we were able to connect and um Excited to I'm, have you here. I'm glad I can now choose the tires that I will take on my next bike ride. <laughs> and I good. say that because I have no idea what tires I run normally on bike rides. So, so are you going to be now giving us all I'm guidance? Gonna, well, I'm oh, actually just going to CC Joey and be like, so Joey, you may want to watch this video <laughs> on what bike I should ride. Hey, Vihan, at the end of these things, we always do our little this or that. Um, we always invite our guests to join us. And I'm going to ask you to do the same. And I'm not going to give you the opportunity to say no. So we're going to jump right. right into I'm, that. I'm in. <laughs> we're going to take two things, throw them up against each other. And you can... Give an answer, and you can explain yourself if you choose to, but you don't have to. But that's where all the fun comes in anyway. So Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to toss it over to you first, Vihan, then Jess. Got it. Then I'm going to answer, and then I'm going to give Joey the the opportunity to bring it all home. Does that sound good, Joey? You like that? Making sure you're on board. Okay. That was a salute. First (laughs) item up on this week's This or That, would you rather have a socially distanced, masked Philly Bike Expo or no Philly Bike Expo? <laughs> that, that's an easy one. I'll, I'll go for the first one. And uh, um, uh, off camera, we, we, we chatted about that. And we were all there for the Philly Bike Expo. And uh, what an awesome experience to, yeah. to go. So uh, I will definitely take you know, any kind of cautionary measures that you have to, to follow, you know, to at least be able to see awesome bikes in yeah. person. So definitely. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to say the same thing. Um, I teach in mask all day. Um, I usually actually I drink so much during the day that my mask is constantly down because, you know, I'm hydrating. I'm drinking my one or so two So what coffees. are you drinking? Alcohol? No. <laughs> I will take a mask. It was a very great event. It was great to be there. It was great to meet other people. So I 100% would do it again. So yeah, absolutely. I and I kind of threw this one in there because I wanted to give them some props and to give everybody that was there props. You know, I never saw any like, oh, I don't want to wear a mask or it's just it was like it was the normal thing and it was really cool and it was so exciting to actually like Beyond said be able to see these really cool bikes yeah and get together and see friends, meet new friends and mm-hmm. all that good stuff. Joey, <laughs> it felt nice. <laughs> yeah, it did. But Pave was, I think, my first big thing with COVID, I guess. Mm-hmm. We were outside. It was a shindig. It was cold, wet, rainy. Um, but to be indoors with everyone, mask or no mask, um, obviously mask. Yeah, no one made a big stink out of it. It just felt yeah. normal. Yeah, it's um, great. It's absolutely great. I also couldn't smell the weird smells from cyclists that you're used <laughs> to smelling, whether it be <laughs> some devil's lettuce, mostly B.O. I just wrote in. Um you know, all that stuff. So, I love it. Yeah. Loved it. Uh, second item on this or that this week, boa closures on your shoes or lace them up? Uh, I I don't have either on both of my shoes. Ah. <laughs> both my road and my mountain bike shoes. So, are, you, quali- you, you just- qualify to make a long-term review then on boa closures yeah. according to our standards. <laughs> yeah. The only place I have a boa connection is on my, my saddlebag, actually. I've got the Silka yeah. saddlebag, and yeah. it's got like one of those dials. But uh, other than that, I'm a Velcro guy. <laughs> Jeff? Um, I hate the sound of Velcro. It skeeves me out. It makes me like, like it, it's like... Um, 
But I have boa shoes, and I absolutely love them. Um, I think I'd be too lazy to tie shoelaces, so the boas <laughs> are very good for me. Okay, I have a little boa pet peeve. So I love boa closures. You know that. But I have my RX-8. They're the, bo- the boas that you just pull out, and they loosen. And then my torches, you have to twist them backwards. Yeah, that's how mine are. And my gimpy fingers... I have a real hard time actually getting them to go backwards. And I don't know if it's me or the boa. I just, go, it's you. I just <laughs> go with it. It's me. Yeah. I just like to be able to reach down and pop them and, and let them go and just open them up. So, but I do prefer boa closures over laces because I, I have this irrational fear that my laces are going to get gummed up in the drive train. Oh, yeah. Go, Joey. Um, that's tough. Hmm? I like it. I have a pair of lace-up recons, and I have a pair of just regular S-Works, too, mm-hmm. with boas. I have one of each. The lazy side of me likes the boas. Mm-hmm. The cool comfort side, I like lacing them up. It's like yeah, my fourth pair of lace-up shoes. Yeah, because it's like, you know, you have that opportunity to sort of like adjust to that. You can do that with the boas, too. But, yeah, like the uh, S-Works boas, they have that nice Swiss style, like watch kind of. Mine is super sweet. Yeah, so we have the same... So, Pair even, of shoes of those? Even though boas have this whole lifetime thing, and I've actually had to get repair kits for my boas, yeah. you will cuss them all day long when you're getting ready to do a ride, or especially if it's in a big event, and that boa snaps, and you don't have the repair Yeah, I can yet. do anything for a shoelace. That's, that's So I like the shoelace on my S-Work shoes versus my... I like my RX-8s, but I love that nice metal... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you never know. But okay. in my triathlon days, I oh, did have geez. Velcro shoes. So just saying that. Speaking of which, third <laughs> item on this week's this or that, unpaved on a single speed or run a triathlon. <laughs> it's actually do a triathlon. Do a triathlon. Because I'm you don't sorry. you only like, run in a third of the triathlon. I don't know. <laughs> Behind. Well, uh, I, I have a lot of triathlons in my in my history as well. So, so Jess, I'm with you on that one. I actually my my road shoes are still my triathlon shoes. It's just a single strap that goes over. It's my my quick you know release shoes. I can get out of them with one one strap. That's it, you know. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> um, no, definitely. I'll, I've I've shifted a lot over the years. I've I've moved a lot of, um, away from my triathlon days for now. You know, even though my background is in running and. I don't really call myself a swimmer. That was always my my weakest discipline. But uh, nowadays, I'm a pure cyclist. So I've never done a single speed ride. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. even know how that feels. Um, but I, I'll pick that. I think you know that'll be a nice challenge. Maybe for a future video, I need to I need to uh, throw out my first gravel ride of the week that's on a single speed. <laughs> nice. There we go, Jess. You already answered. Did you answer? I no, didn't answer. answer. But see, this is the thing because I didn't do like the difference and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I could have handled my 60 mile ride on a single speed. Okay. You know, it was hilly, but not as much as I was like huffing and puffing. Mm-hmm. And there wasn't anything I would need to unclip and white, like white walk up. So um, I would. But triathlons are kind of nice. I'm going to say do a triathlon. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say. This the, the last one and this one. I applaud you, Jeff. You, you, Jess, you came up with some fantastic this or that's this week because I put out the call and I said I need this or that. So, I got it, I and got you responded. It. Um, I have to earn my keep here. So I would, I would like a point of order though. I need to clarify a question. Clarify, it, clarify. Um, do you need to finish unpaved or a single speed, or just start? No, unpaved? you have to finish unpaved on a single speed. Like they will not. Like you have oh, to finish. Lord. Like Dave is gonna say, like, nope, you still have to come. Like you, there's, it's still safe. Will there be snacks for like three days? Yeah. Will, be, no. will, will Will Tanya be at the ranch for like probably, three days? Probably. <laughs> Because otherwise, I'm not so sure. Um, I I would do anything rather than than do a triathlon again. Even though <laughs> yeah, I am a swimmer, I just can't run. It's it's miserable. I I actually did a few a You're few a years great swimmer. Ago. Yeah, I I always loved to swim. I've always been a swimmer, and I know it's like well. well People at the pool would always be like, what are you training for? I'm like, I'm not training or anything. I'm training not to have a heart attack is what I'm training for ultimately. So it's great for your body. Yeah. So and, it's great. And, and and somebody got in my ear and said, let's do a do triathlon. You should try a triathlon. And I did. And it was all right. It was it was okay. I'm glad I did them. Um, and, and so I have that experience. But 
Joey says triathlons are uh, so like middle school. Yeah. You have to try them. You have to get through them. But you gotta find yourself. You gotta to get find out of it. yourself yeah. in order. Yeah. You know. So there we go. So go I, ahead, Joey. I will. I will literally do the, the anything other than a triathlon, Joey. I don't have to answer this one. <laughs> I think everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah joey would not do a triathlon is it this whole running thing it's like everything all all of the everything of okay last item on this or that biscuits or cornbread hmm i'll take biscuits yeah <laughs> i'm going biscuits too i'm not a huge cornbread fan it's not no? like oh look there's cornbread yum i'm so excited you know like no, a good cornbread a good cornbread that's kind of like sweet. Like with barbecue, like absolutely yeah. that's and good. But... So many times people come up with the cornbread. It's like, oh, it looks good. And then you pop it open and it's like sandpaper. It's all dry mm. and nasty. I, I don't get like personally excited for cornbread. You can always pour a bunch of gravy over top of biscuit. And so I'm for that reason alone, I too am going to go with biscuit. Joey? I think this has been a this or that. No. Uh, maybe for the fishing podcast, but. I love a good cornbread. I, I do know. love a good biscuit too, but my dad, like my dad, will just make box jiff, mm-hmm. jiffy, and cast iron, and put some. I don't know what he puts in it with it, but I could just eat the whole thing. See, now I, I don't like like a creamy one, and I don't like it with like chunks of corn either. Mm-hmm. Uh, just I, I love cornbread I, and a vanilla coke. I didn't know for the longest time because you know my family we come from North Carolina. I didn't know for the longest time that cornbread wasn't just this flat, like stuff that was fried. Yeah, in a it's pan. a nice, fluffy. But all of a sudden, cornbread went from being this like little little hard tack thing. Is this because someone like made cake. cornbread for the club party and you didn't like it? No, did somebody make cornbread? That's all there. I was afraid to eat it. I didn't. I didn't have any. I didn't even see it. I would have tried. Uh, I would have sampled. Cracker Barrel has very dry cornbread. I like their biscuits. <laughs> I like their biscuits though. We behind sorry, we do random we we get off on I get we talk about food. <laughs> My bedtime is at eleven minutes, so <laughs> Oh easy. Okay. Anybody else have anything before we shut this thing down? No? no? No, I think we're good. Thanks okay. for coming on. No, I, I love Philly. It was nice seeing everyone. Yeah. It's nice seeing you, honey. Yeah. Thanks. And Vihan, thank you for joining us tonight. It's been a great conversation. I look forward to doing it again. And and maybe next time we're at an event, we'll have the opportunity to sit down next to a fire together. That'd be awesome, too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate being on the podcast. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for, for watching the videos. That's first and foremost, the biggest support that people can give the channels. Just, you know, uh, watching the videos. I, I love the feedback. And so, uh, yeah, if it inspires people to get out there. I'll keep on doing it. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of Mid-Atlantic Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. This is a listener-supported podcast by some pretty amazing people on Patreon and PayPal. You can go to the website and find out some more about that at... Uh, what's the website address, Joey? Are we talking about us now? Yeah. All right. Sorry, I was thinking of... Uh, That's okay. Yeah. Uh, GravelTravelDirt.com. So I'm a little like it's, I got like four things going on in my head right I now. Know. You're probably over there doing uh, ordering and our yeah. Instagram, which uh, we have been mm-hmm. more active on, is mm-hmm. at Mid Atlantic GTD. Our Wookie contest is over. I am waiting to hear from um, our the judge, a judge, to see who had the best uh, Wookie impersonation. Uh, have we heard anything from the Wookie judge? No, the Wookie judge is dead to me. The Wookie judge is silent. Oh, well, yep. that's just the way it is. Mid Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt is recorded this week from right here in Joey's Kitchen, all the way out to Great Falls in Northern Virginia. Thanks for riding along. Until next time, do good, be nice, go slow, and respect others. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a great night. Love you. Bye. Bye. You did. I love you. Bye. Sorry. Good grief. Good grief.